President and Mrs. Trout have had an amazing impact on the Rhodes community. Since their arrival in 1999, the student body has increased from 1,450 to over 2,000 students. Student retention has reached an all-time high. Faculty, staff, and student diversity has increased by all measures. The college's national reputation has risen. International opportunities for students have exploded. Our relationship with Memphis has deepened. The endowment has grown over $100 million and our campus footprint has expanded. Rose students' postgraduate recognition has also been a highlight during their 18-year tenure, with students receiving Watson, National Science Foundation, Luce, Fulbright, Truman, and the Rhodes Fellowships, just to name a few. Rhodes has also been recognized nationally by Newsweek as the most service-minded students and most likely to succeed, annually named a college that changes lives in Lauren Pope's book, and Princeton Review has named Rhodes one of the colleges that creates futures and America's most beautiful campus. The list goes on and on. Walk across the campus and you will see stunning changes. The McCoy Theater and Catherine Burrow refectory renovations and expansions, Burrow Hall renovation, the addition of the Austin Building, East and West Villages, Craddock Quad, Paul Barrett Jr. Library, Erwin Lanoff Stadium, Mason Field, Crane Field, Evergreen Property, McNeil Concert Hall, Parkway Hall, the soon-to-be-completed renovations of Briggs Hall, and the new state-of-the-art science facility, Robertson Hall. The Rhodes College community is eternally grateful for their lasting impact. However, at the heart of what makes Bill and Carol Trout so special is their connections to individual community members. The stories are too vast to fully capture, but the lives they have touched will never be forgotten by the Rhodes community. As we honor the Trout's invaluable contributions to Rhodes, let's take a walk down memory lane to hear how this journey began from a few who have been touched by their love of Rhodes and their compassion and kindness for others. I had found being at a residential liberal arts college uh, such a profound uh, impact. It had changed my life and I want to be part of something like that. And my simple deduction was I didn't think I wanted to be a professor. That didn't feel quite right. Um, so maybe I'll be an administrator. And my, in my you know, 21 year old naive thinking, why not strive to be the president? So I told my, um, my advisor, uh, I guess the spring of my senior year that um, that was my ambition and uh, uh, obviously to everyone's surprise including mine a decade later I would be a college president. Well first it was Bill who was convinced because he came really as a favor to a headhunter who had helped a friend of his and he felt obligated to this headhunter. So he came down, the headhunter said, come to Rhodes, you can stay in the Peabody, you can run by and see your parents and Bolivar on the way home, and um, you might learn something. They're doing some nice things down here. So he came to Rhodes on a Thursday evening. His, his interview, I think, was the first one on Friday morning. I think they were interviewing 12. This was the first round of interviews. I think 12 were interviewed. So um, he was really, really impressed with the committee. Uh, what was what they really really hoped for and it was an already really good school lots of history lots of tradition lots of success um, and yet uh, they wanted more they knew they could be more and he was so intrigued by that and then John Roan had driven him and I'm sure all the other candidates through the campus silently and then through um, through Morningside, the side of the uh, president's house. So um, he had seen this campus, he had seen the house, and driving to Bolivar, he called, he said, we really need to think about this. One of my favorite memories is the story of how I decided to come to Rhodes. I was a senior in high school and I had already decided I was for sure going to another school. It was a good school and I was happy with my decision, but I got one of those phone calls from President Trout where he tries to recruit people at the last minute and he tried to recruit me a little and um, I kind of 
didn't think much about it, but I was polite and got off the phone. And then later that day, I kept thinking about it and I thought, man, maybe I could talk to him more. He was so nice and maybe I'm like choosing the wrong school. And so I decided to call him back and it happened to be his cell phone number for some reason that I had. So I ended up calling him on his cell phone number and he was nice enough to answer and talk to me on the phone for a long time. And I remember my mom walking into the living room where I was talking and she said, did you just call the president of Rhodes on your cell phone? You can't just call him on his cell phone. You can't do that. And so she was very embarrassed for me, but it seemed to work out in my favor. He was really helpful in convincing me that Rhodes was the right fit for me. Little did we know that our lives would be changing that afternoon in April 2009. Layla, my daughter, and I had just finished touring. We were very impressed by the beautiful campus and the helpful, friendly staff, faculty, and students that we had met. A friendly man that we thought was a professor, conversed with us while we waited for our taxi to arrive. The gentleman was very personable and kind. At the end, he sweetly confessed to being the school's president. He never hesitated to reach out to two strangers and change their lives. That is what he does. Uh, President Trout has meant a lot to the direction of my life. One of the first memories I have uh, just being a freshman on campus is during orientation. Uh, all freshmen are invited to the president's house. All of us were away from our own homes. It was just so wonderful to, to come to a completely new experience and to visit the president's house uh, during orientation. Uh, have him. I, the, the, the memory that I have is just uh, uh, he and Carol just sitting at the uh, door of the house with Boomer the dog and just how welcoming uh, that experience was. The Trouts really cared about the students at Rhodes um, and that they were champions for their success. They were incredibly warm and they asked me what my dreams were and what I'd hoped to accomplish at Rhodes. Um, now during my four years at Rhodes I got to know President Trout quite well um, as I somehow kept on running into him while giving campus tours um, and he also went out of his way to attend my concerts with the Rhodes Orchestra. Um, and I was very much uh, in admiration of how much he was involved in day-to-day -day student life. Um, I recall the day he asked me to actually help him welcome new students from China in their native language. Um, we actually spent quite a bit of time in his office that day practicing how to say uh, Rhodes Huan Yingni, which means Rhodes welcomes you. And to me, um, his humility and his drive to make foreign students feel at home on campus uh, spoke uh, volumes of his character as a leader. When I arrived on campus almost 17 years ago, I did not imagine how much a Rhodes education would transform me or that the president would actually become a mentor and later a friend. You taught me that liberal arts education at its very best is an education of both the head and the heart. Dr. Trout, Mrs. Trout, you've been a catalyst for my transformation at Rhodes and beyond. It was the end of my freshman year. I remember it was a couple days after I found out I had cancer. I was laying in bed at home, just kind of waiting for the next step for treatment to start. And we had planned to start treatment in New Orleans because it was closer to home. And he called me and told me that he wanted me to choose what was best for me, but that he had um, gotten me an opening to be a patient at St. Jude if I wanted it. And at the time, I didn't realize what a huge gift that was. But once we got there, my mom and I um, completely realized what an incredible gift it was to be treated there rather than anywhere else. And the whole year of treatment was really formative for me in shaping my career and what I want to do with my life. What a great guy, what an accessible guy to, uh, to, to personally and powerfully inspire students. Uh, in speaking to him, I, uh, uh, I've decided to pursue my passions in teaching for a uh, PhD in accounting. And uh, as a result of that, actually ne next Tuesday, I have an entrance exam on it. And uh, just President Trout has encouraged me all along the way. Uh, much of my career trajectory um, to the strong relationship that he helped foster with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. 
Um, so now I'm an MD-PhD candidate at Case Western Reserve University, and I'm studying under the renowned immunotherapy researcher, Dr. Alex Huang. All of this came about, um, all of my ability to pursue my dream of curing cancer um, due to the opportunities, the mentorship, uh, and the sense of community that President and Mrs. Trout helped create at Rhodes. The Trouts have left an indelible, enduring mark on Rhodes, um, and I'm really proud to be part of their lasting legacy. Wait, this can't be the Wizard of Oz. We were asked to do a uh, student video that would again introduce uh, the incoming freshmen that year to the campus and uh, just on a lark I, I, I wrote this script with a couple friends that uh, we called President Trout's Neighborhood and it was a way of kind of showing the, the, the Rhodes vision with puppets and what you imagine with Mr. Rogers and I didn't really think in a million years that he would accept to do it uh, but uh, I, I, I sent it off to him and, and pretty soon later the, um, the president staff, staff contacted me and said, yeah, President Trout would, would love to, uh, uh, to be a part of uh, this video as Mr. Rogers. It's a beautiful day at Rhodes College, a beautiful day for a scholar. Could you be mine? Could you be mine? I've always wanted a scholar. Uh, that was really the, the uh, first time that I really got to kind of know him and, and, and talk to him, uh, talk to him a significant amount. It was it was incredible. At, at the time, he was uh, in Palmer. He went up to his office and just this beautiful office, and he opened it up to us. was very very welcoming. And here, this president of the college was talking to puppets during this as Mr. Rogers. Uh, it was just a really great experience, and it was just a way of kind of showing. Uh, uh, roads to these new students and showing really how accessible this president was. We made, if you'll remember from Mr. Rogers, there was a trolley and I, it's funny how just you, you keep things, you know, you keep small things, you don't really think of anything of it at the time and I don't know, this this just always ended up kind of moving with me wherever I was and uh, it's just been in my home office for a very long time. Carol Trout's quiet grace permeates our campus culture in so many ways. Even before she arrived 18 years ago as the college's first lady, she had dreams of coming to Rhodes. Uh, and uh, one of the great pleasures in life is to fulfill a dream she had as a young woman. Um, Southwestern was her first choice. And she was very respectful of uh, having two younger brothers who are gonna need to be educated. Union offered her a uh, much more generous scholarship and so uh, for her family, she uh, uh, attended Union. Always had a love for Southwestern being the right place for her. And so I did get her there a little later. And it's been uh, a joy for her and obviously a joy for our community to have her. Carol brings compassion, care, and involvement to a whole other level. I want to thank Mrs. Trout for taking me shopping for clothes to outfit me for the Arctic in Minnesota because she knew I was coming to the Mayo Clinic for medical school and she was very worried about me and how I would live up there as a Southern lady. So she took me to a really great store in Memphis before I graduated and I stocked up on all the necessities and they have kept me warm. Uh, presidential spouses uh, are uh, so important and uh, Rhodes couldn't have a better presidential spouse, first lady, uh, than Carol Trout. She's one of the smartest people you'd ever want to know. Very unassuming, but very wise. And she has been uh, an unbelievable counselor for me. Uh, provided uh, perspective, provided feedback, uh, provided a level of uh, encouragement and love and support that's just 
off the, st off the chart. Well, one word that comes uh, is class. They have so much class. Uh, there are two aspects of, I think I mentioned, of um, my attitude and my relationship with uh, Bill Trout is, uh, one is the professional image that I respect of him and the other is the friendship. And the reason, I guess the reason I call him Dr. Bill, the doctor part is uh, the part about his status uh, uh, with Rhodes and how much I respect that uh, job that he does. And then, and then Bill, uh, as it from Dr. Bill, is the friendship part. So that's why I call him Dr. Bill. We still wonder how this gentleman always finds time to reach out to so many, to write the most caring messages, to run such a fine institution in such a personalized way. He has the gift of bringing out the best in all the lives he touches. Thank you, Bill and Carol, for all the lives you have changed. There is no doubt that you will continue to be a blessing to all you encounter. Mostly I just wanted to say thank you to the Trouts for all that they've done for me. They had done a lot for me through different stages of my career at Rhodes and they've done things for me not just regarding academics but also health and um, they helped me choose my medical school, which I'm very happy with. So they've done kind of too many things to say thank you for, but I wanted to thank them for all of those things. Dr. Trout, Mrs. Trout, you've been a catalyst for my transformation at Rhodes and beyond. You've offered kindness and support to me as a student, alumnus, and member of the staff. You've supplied wise counsel as I've discerned my vocation. You've developed a vision for Rhodes that's made my transformation possible. For your example, for your vision, for your life of leadership. We offer our heartfelt congratulations and our deepest thanks. Thank you, Dr. Bill. Uh, thank you, Dr. Trout. Thank you, Dr. Trout. Thank you, P. Trout. Thank you, Dr. Trout. Thank you, President Trout, for a wonderful journey. Dr. Trout, thank you for everything. Thank you, President Trout. Thank you, Dr. Trout. Thank you, Dr. Trout. Thank you, Dr. Trout. Thank you, Dr. Trout. Thank you, President and Mrs. Trout. Thank you, President Trout. Thank you, Dr. Trout. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, President Trout. Thank you, Dr. Trout. Dr. Trout, I really appreciate you giving me an opportunity to announce for the people to go home during the luncheon. Looking forward to it again. You have a good day and thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Trout and Carol. He's, he's meant so much to me and uh, I just want to thank you, Dr. Trout, for everything you've done for Rhodes for 18 years, uh, everything you've done uh, uh, for me and all the students here. We really appreciate it and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's, it's a place of heart. There's nothing quite like this place. We've been blessed to be here. What a privilege. And you know, Rhodes is that kind of campus. It's so enveloping, so um, engaging. Um, um, it brings everybody together. To say the least, uh, I want people to know um, what a privilege it has been for me to serve and what a privilege I think it is for all of us, students, faculty, staff, trustees, uh, to be part of a great institution like this uh, in terms especially of its, uh, its aspirations for its students, um, how it wants to make the world better. Um, so I'd want to remind uh, people what a precious privilege we all have being here. And I want to say to them also um, that um, sometimes your life exceeds your dreams. And that's been my experience here. And I hope it will be for everyone, everyone who's part of this community.